Hi, welcome to the SQL tutorial video and today we're going to look at joining a table to itself and joining uh, having joined to the same table multiple times. Um, so in my training database I've got a table called my customers. It's a small table just built for training, you know, for, for this kind of demonstration. Um, it's got a customer name and then against each customer we've got a primary contact, a secondary contact and a responsible contact. I've also got a table called my staff. That's got the staff members who work at my company. And these people will have been assigned to each of these customers as primary, secondary or responsible contacts. And what I want to do is create a list of all the customers uh, or maybe a specific customer and show the contacts, the primary, secondary and responsible. So um, what we do is we just create a, a join. So let's do an inner join to my staff. Um, I'm going to join the primary contact. I'm going to return the name of the person who is the primary contact. So when I create an alias for this table, usually I would, I would create an alias as the initials of my, of my table name or ST for staff or something. But in this case, I'm going to say the table uh, name alias is going to be PC for primary contact. And I will say I'm joining on primary contact ID equals PC dot ID. And here I can say cu.starpc.staff name. And if I run that, um, I don't even want that really. I'm going to put cust name. And the alias here is primary. Then I can, um, so to get the secondary, I need to join to the same table. And that's fine, I can do that. So I can do another join in the join to my staff. But when it comes to the alias, I can't have the same alias. If I do the same alias here, it's it's going to um, give you an error to say you can't have um, an alias multiple times in the same way. So because this is going to be my secondary contact, I'm going to have an alias of SC. Uh, it still joins to the customer table, but it joins to the secondary contact ID, our column, and this points to my new table's ID. Um, there we are. And finally, I can do the same join again to my staff. Um, and this is the um, the third one, the, the person who is going to speak directly to them. So we do RC on CU dot responsible equals um, RC dot ID, and here we can say if I can type there. So we had one table, and we've joined that one table to the same table three times to get three sets of data. Um, there's lots of examples generally uh, where this kind of could come up, and that's how you achieve it. Remember. Um, to make the aliases as meaningful as possible. So in this case, primary contact, secondary contact, responsible contact, those initials, because depending on the size of your SQL, you're going to want to reference these things, depending on how many columns you're, you're returning. Um, and if, if it's lines and lines and lines of, of code, then it's easy to get lost. So that's the important bit, those aliases. Now let's look at something else if I may. So let's get rid of that. I've got a table called um, uh, I've got a table called employees and I've got a table called offices. So I've got a um, so I've got an employee employee A. I'll just give this an alias and I'll drag this up here and I'm going to do a join to my offices table uh, ok 
Okay, so if I do that, oh, excuse me, bottom one here. So this is my employee, uh, and I'll put it here, uh, em dot full name, and then I'll put the office code, office name. Now, what uh, I'm doing this for is because within the office table there is also someone called an office manager, and that relates back to the employees table. So. Indirectly, I'm going, to, I'm going to go from employees to offices, then back to employees. And this is the office manager, so I'm going to call this OM. And my link is office manager ID equals OM.ID. So now at the top here, I can do OM.name. And run that. And it says employee A works in this office. And the office manager for that office is employee B. So that's just an example of where you go from, from one table to another table and reference back. And once again, this is the important thing. Make sure you get your aliases right so you are always you always know um, what columns and what fields you, you're looking at. And also, it, it's good practice. Um, every field that you reference is your prefix with, with an alias, regardless of, of the fact that... It, it, there might not be another column um, sharing that name. It doesn't matter because if this is a really large bit of SQL, it's easy to get lost in which field references which table. Whereas if you've got this alias, it's much more easy to kind of uh, look at it at a later date and, um, and make alterations to it. The final example I want to show in this is same table, employees. Uh, in the employees table, we've got a... Um, field call supervisor. So where em dot full name equals, and we'll just get employee r. And I want to get the name of the employee, which is fine. Um, but also I want to get the name of their supervisor. Now we've got this here. Uh, supervisor column. So I can do a direct link from one table to itself. Um, so this will be supervisor, so I'll call it SU on em dot supervisor equals SU dot ID. And now I should be able to do SU dot full name. Now the reason that's doing that is because I need to refresh my local cache. I should sort that out. Good. Um, so there's my employee full name and my supervisor full name. And if I run that, there you go, the full name is employee R and their supervisor is employee G. Uh, that's the end of this tutorial. Hopefully it made sense. Uh, any queries, please drop me a comment. Uh, uh, I'll see if I can help. Um, I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. See you next time.